have a cup of tea, please? <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. <sighs> no, no, no. It's okay, it's okay. Um, I'm all right. <clears throat> Sorry, it's the it's the first time I've drank anything with this new body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, thank you for this blanket. As you could probably tell, I haven't worn actual fabric on my skin for most of my life. Hmm? My life. When they hear about it, of course you do. The name my parents gave me was Raven. My mother told me it was because my hair was as black as a crow's. Stupid. She was a God-fearing woman, my mother. You had to follow each of the commandments to even be close to her. We lived in a small town outside Louisiana. It was fun for a while. And then it happened. I got up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom and my hair was bright red. I couldn't believe it, neither could mom. But she took it as a just a natural progression. Then about a week later, I got told I had yellow eyes by a girl at school. Went to see the pharmacist. He hadn't a clue what was wrong. But just a few days later, I looked at my hand and it was all blue. The look on mom's face was priceless. Like she'd seen a ghost. <laughs> and that's how it started. The kids at school weren't too pleased when they found out some dirty mutant was in their class. And I got treated like dirt, as you could imagine. Soon, I was all blue, scales everywhere. I came home and see my mom with a kitchen knife running towards me. She thought I was a demon, or at least possessed by one. Little did she know, my powers weren't just external. So I fought back, and I got away. Sixteen, alone and afraid. And then I met him. This tall, dark, well-spoken man who gave me shelter from the storm. His name was Eric. He was a mutant like me. At that time, he was partnered with a man named Charles, but they didn't exactly see eye to eye. So they parted ways. I stayed with Eric and it was the greatest time of my life. We stayed in a cottage together in Georgia and he told me stories of his time in Germany and the troubles he faced being different. The day I turned 18, I looked in a mirror to see Eric staring back at me. At first I was horrified, but this is when I learned of my true power. I could imitate anyone I wanted, at any time. I could look like them, speak like them. I could mimic their voice, height, size, or shape, anything. Eric was so proud of me. He said that when the time came, we would rise up and lead our own kind against the human scum. And we did. A 
after five years together. Eric and I were separated after a mutant rights rally turned violent. I thought I lost him. It wasn't until a year later he tracked me down. But he wasn't alone. In his arms were children, twins. Wanda and Pietro, both beautiful mutants. Their mother had died and Eric knew he could trust me. So that's what we done. I became a mother to them. Years went by in solitude, away from protests and rallies. Pietro found he could travel up to supersonic speeds and Wanda, well, she could do anything. They looked up to me, loved me, as I did them. I would have done anything for them, and I did. But the humans couldn't leave well enough alone. Senator Robert Kelly was going to introduce the anti Mutation Administration Act. So we thought we'd teach him a lesson. Myself, Eric and the twins took it upon ourselves to show the senator what it felt like to be us, to be different. Eric had built a machine that could reverse the genetics of a human to become a mutant, but it had become unstable. Charles returned and he had a few friends. We defended Eric as best we could and I came away with a few scars from Logan, but Eric had been arrested and taken away. The twins and I freed Eric after over a year in prison. But he informed us of a man named William Stryker who was going to wipe out all mutant kind. We were forced to unite with Charles again. I even got to meet Logan. He made me laugh. Then we had to take over Stryker's facility and we took care of him. We left on good terms with Charles but deep down, we knew it wasn't the end. Sure enough, a year or two later, what happens? The cure. <laughs> they really thought they could cure something that was better than them. Typical of humans. Eric and I we had to raise an army of mutants to fight against the humans. We were so close to getting started when someone tried to shoot him with one of those damn weapons and I stopped it. I took the bullet for him. Lost everything. He told me I'm sorry, my dear. You're not one of us anymore. And you know, the worst part? He was right. Waited for days in the truck, freezing, starving, terrified. And then you found me. Took you long enough. That's called a confession. You're going to arrest me now. Take me to the FBI. They will probably ask me where Eric is. Human fools. They really think I'd give up the man I loved for so many years? Don't worry. I appreciate you trying to break me with this. 
but you'll never find him. Go on, torture me, hurt me, I won't break. That's one of the many things he taught me. You humans will never learn. Don't think for a second that I'll be this way for long. The FBI will run tests, experiment on me, but I won't feel any pain. Because I know that right now, Eric is out there and he's winning. And that's all that keeps me going. Goodbye.